This could be the most dangerous knot in the world, so use it wisely. Known as the constrictor, once it binds down around an object, it won't let go. But it does also have some incredible uses. Now to tie it, wrap your line around an object, then cross it over and create this X shape. As you come back around, go over your main rope and then under that X. Now the tighter you pull on each end, the more it will constrict. Use it to tie off loose ends, bundle up sticks or objects, create permanent loops, and fasten objects more securely, along with many more uses. You can remember it as the X knot, but also remember never tie this X knot around limbs or body parts as it's dangerous and won't come loose. Now here's a skill that everyone should know. What's an easy way to connect two ropes together? If they're the same thickness, just fold one over the other into the shape of a six and have that small rope on top. With the other rope, fold it into a nine and have the shorter end underneath. Now layer that six on top of the nine and just feed those shorter ends through the middle in opposite directions. 9 through the front and the 6 through the back. And to tighten it, it's really easy. Just grab all the loose ends and pull away from each other. And then you could just tighten it up. This is a really cool knot for two reasons. One, no matter how much weight you put on it, it'll never bind. It's just easy to undo. And two, its name is the Zeppelin knot. So plain and simply, it rocks. This is one of the coolest knots you probably haven't heard of. It holds in place if there's tension on the line, but if you give it a tug, the whole thing comes loose. It's been really useful while camping in the backcountry. I first lower my pack down, then I pull my rope back up so I can lower something else. Now I can climb down without the pack on, which is much safer. To tie it, we'll use our right hand to do a forward overhand loop. Now with your left hand, create a bite with the tag end of your rope and slide it through that loop. Now this part takes a bit of practice, but it has to be tensioned evenly and slowly. If you don't, the knot is going to slip out, which is why you should only use this when lowering gear or tools and never on lowering a person or anything valuable. This is truly one of the best knots in the world, and it could actually double your strength, meaning if you pull 10 pounds, it'll translate that to more than 20 pounds of force, making it extremely useful when strapping things down to a truck like a canoe or getting perfect tension on a tarp. Now tying it is very easy. Take the the free end of your rope and thread it through your anchor point. Now reach forward and create what I like to call an ignition on loop. I call it this because I find it's easy to remember the motion of turning a car on. It's the exact same wrist motion we perform on our line. Grab a bite of that rope closer to you, feed it up and through, and now pull and it locks it in place. This creates what's known as a slip knot and that's really all there is to it. Just take your free end and feed it through that slip knot and now when you pull it's going to use the mechanical advantage of this pulley system to more than double the amount of strength you could crank down with. And once you have enough tension, just pinch the line, grab a bite from your free end, go underneath and then back under itself and it creates a quick release, which you could pull to release the whole thing. This is not a knot, it's an adjustable hitch, meaning it could slide freely, but with tension it locks in place. And it only takes three wraps, so anyone can tie it. It's perfect for sweatpants or shorts because it could tighten or loosen just by pulling The same it. goes for any kind of drawstrings, including backpack straps, and is particularly good for field repairs, tightening clotheslines, or getting the perfect tension on tarps. Just attach it to the tie outs, slide it along your ridge line, and it locks in place. And even tying two ropes together so you get an adjustable attachment. To tie it, we perform one full round turn crossing diagonal over the standing line. Our second wrap goes diagonal just above the first, and our third wrap over top and underneath itself. Two wraps under, one wrap over, and you've tied the rolling hitch. A life skill that everyone should know. Creating a proper loop that won't bind up when you pull against it. And with so many uses like hanging items, a multi-directional pull, multiple inline items for fishing, and even tying two ropes together. You can easily tie it by remembering this saying. The butterfly spins around twice, flies under the branch, and lands in the center of the flower. Now we could pull both ends to tighten it up. To connect two ropes together, we could do the same thing. Pinching the connecting point, it's like we just have one rope. Spin the loop around once, and now twice. Bring it underneath itself, and forward through that center hole that we see here. Pull it tight, and you've tied what's known as the queen of knots, the alpine butterfly. This is the world's most trusted knot, and here's the easiest way to tie it. First, imagine turning the keys to a car off. Use that motion to create a loop on our main line. Now take your free end and follow the old saying. The rabbit comes up out of its hole, runs around the tree, and back down through its hole. 
Now pull your main line to tighten, and if you've tied it right, you'll see this U-shape, characteristic of the world-famous king of knots, the bowline knot. A really useful skill in life is knowing how to cinch down a rope around objects. Whether binding things together for repairs, creating a secure cross brace, or wrapping and bundling things up, and it's so easy to learn. All you do is wrap your object and tie a simple overhand knot just like this. Now tie another overhand knot right above that one on the same line. Take the other end of the rope and feed it through the hole in that first overhand. Now as you start to pull tension on it, the two knots are going to jam together, giving it the name the Canadian Jam Knot. And once it binds, it won't come loose until you want it to, by simply pulling on the knot in the opposite direction. Now this is something incredibly useful. When you pull on this knot, it'll hold tight, but without friction, it'll freely slide, meaning you don't have to tie and retie knots every time you need to adjust making it perfect for tensioning tarps or hanging up items that you want to move around later, like a pot over a campfire that you just slide to the side once the water boils. Since it's a loop, attaching this stuff is easy. Slide it through and put a stick on the other side. Tying it is even easier and it's essentially just three simple wraps. First, take a loop of cord and wrap it around your main line. Repeat this pattern for a second wrap going through the middle once again. And now a third wrap the exact same way, making sure that middle loop is coming down through the center and everything's neat. This is a type of friction hitch and it's called the Prusik knot. So you get to a tree, wrap your rope, and totally forget how to tie a knot. Well next time, just do this. Wrap your rope five times around the tree. Then just cross over your main line twice, pulling it underneath itself to lock it in place. Known as the tensionless hitch, it's technically the strongest way to anchor a rope because it doesn't have a knot that reduces line strength. It's like magic, just slide it down and it loosens, or slide it up and it tightens, and when you let it go, it holds firm. So you could perfectly tension a tarp, a clothesline, or tent rainfly. Even raising or lowering a pot over a fire so you could get that perfect temperature and boiling point. Now here's how to tie it in slow-mo. We simply cross over our main line and now do two wraps on the inside of that loop. Our third wrap is the same direction, but on the outside of that loop. So two in and one out. Now grab and pinch these two points and pull the tag end in the opposite direction to tighten everything up and leave you with the amazing taut line hitch. Let's build a wilderness ladder. It's much easier than you'd think. Grab two poles and some strong cordage. Now finding the exact middle of it, cross your right hand over to your left, forming an overhand loop. Repeat that again and put the second one behind the first. Slide that over the pole and tighten. We do the same thing on the other side. Two loops, the second one behind the first. This is known as a clove hitch. Now with the remaining line, go down a foot, wrap it around, and thread it through. These are called half hitches. Space them about a foot apart all the way down both poles. At the bottoms, we lock it all in place by going around the pole and across itself, creating this X shape, which we then thread the line through the center of. Pull tight, and you've tied the constrictor knot. We build the ladder from the bottom up, and can build as we climb, because pressure on the rung below will tighten up everything above it and make them more secure. Now in less than a minute, you've learned how to do three knots and how to build a wilderness ladder.